Welcome everyone to the Streamzy community call of uh what is it May 16th. Uh first thing on the agenda are some PRs and issues. Uh I edit this PR here to discuss. Uh I think we still haven't decided what the authentication type should be. So uh anyone has any thoughts so that we can move forward with it? I thought about it a bit, and I guess the service account OAuth looks great for me. At least that's the least possible option where we will actually do some mistake from my point of view. That sounds, that sounds good to me. So anyone against it? Okay, so let's go with uh, service account allowed. And if anyone who wasn't here complains, then uh, yeah, that's all they can do. Uh, Marco, do you think you can update the PR accordingly? And I guess ping us on the PR that it's updated and ready for review. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. This doesn't really work, Google Doc. Okay, anyone has any other PRs or issues to discuss? If not, then uh, I think there are three new proposals since last time. Uh, One is about it's extending the feature gates to all streams operators, uh, and that has already quite a lot of approvals. Uh, another one is about allowing users to configure what certificate algorithms should be used. Uh, and the last one is about adding additional volumes uh, to the pods, which I think various people in the community were interested on. So uh, yeah, if any of this catches your interest, please have a look at them and uh, yeah, feel free to comment and so on. Does anyone have anything else for proposals to discuss? If not, then issue triage is next. So uh, the first bug, which 
was raised is that there's no, it's not really bug, it's missing feature, but whatever. Uh, there is no Strumzy IO dash pause reconciliation annotation for the Strumzy pod set resources. Uh, and from my point of view, that's actually intentional because you can't that easily pause the reconciliation of the pod set because if you don't do it through the Kafka custom resource, then essentially the pause annotation will be anyway removed in the next reconciliation and the reconciliation will continue. And I don't think there was really any real use case of how that should work or why should it be useful. So yeah, it seems like something what we should reject, but up for discussion. I think I did look at this at the time, but I can't remember now. Did they give a reason why they wanted to pause it at the pod set rather than just doing it directly on the Kafka resource? I'm not sure it's a reason. Like the user who raised it basically wants to screw up with the pods and change their configurations and whatever. Uh, so they want the rest of the reconciliation to happen, but just not the pod sets. But that doesn't work, right? Because no, I would. I wasn't saying that that was a good idea. That's what they're getting at, though, is it? Yeah. So I think that was their idea that kind of everything else will work smoothly, while. Okay. Uh, some pod is not running because uh, uh, they are doing some debugging or whatever in it. But that's not really how it works. If the pod isn't there with the right name, being ready with the right configuration and so on, then the reconciliation will fail. But actually it will first remove the pause reconciliation from the stream pod set and unpause it anyway, so. Yeah, well, and even regardless, there's a whole risk of all sorts because the, I mean, the one that immediately comes to mind is certificates because that's what I've been working on, but there must be various things where other things could change in the cluster. And if the pod sets don't get updated, then you could result in your brokers, therefore, not working. Yeah. Uh, the certificates ones is the obvious one where you could have other components updating their certificates and then the pod sets, the brokers are still using, they haven't been updated and yeah. But uh, like it wouldn't, I think there are quite complicated ways how it work, you know, uh, like if you pause the reconciliation of the pod set and the pod set controller doesn't handle the pod set and for whatever reason, CA reconciliation happens, a CA renewal happens, for example, then actually the operator would delete the pod to mm -hmm. kind of load the new certificates. But without the pod set controller, the new pod will not be started. So yeah, it will <laughs> basically time out after five minutes of being missing and so on. So yeah, like I don't think it would necessarily renew the CA while some pods of one pod set are using the old certificates, but it would basically break probably already sooner on some different error. But yeah. one way or the other, you don't want to do it. And yeah, that's pretty much the workaround I suggested that if you pause the Kafka reconciliation, then you actually avoid these issues. And you can basically just go and do whatever you want to the pod set or delete the pod set itself and play with the pods directly without any interference from the pod set controller, but also without breaking the Kafka assembly operator. Yeah. I also think we shouldn't be encouraging people necessarily to pause parts of what the reconcilers are doing. I feel like the pause reconciliation should be a, I'm doing something I want to temporarily pause the operator. I think if you start letting people pause bits of it, then you go down a dangerous road of yeah. people ending up with clusters that really don't look like what Strinzy thinks it's managing and then causing all other problems. So yeah, I agree, it's not a good idea. 
There is also the point that you made, Jakub, about uh, this being an internal resource, which is special compared to the others. It also has a different namespace, so that there is a reason for that. Okay, so it sounds like we have agreement to reject this. Yes, for me. Yep. Okay. Next one. Do we have Marosh? No. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what exactly is the issue he's raising here. I guess this weird snippet comes from Kafka logs. Yeah, that's a log from Kafka. So I wonder if this is really a Strimzy or Kafka issue with some race condition or something. Mikael, you are the Kafka expert. Do you have any thoughts on this? Sorry, I got to me. I was doing something else. So I have no idea what. <laughs> Let me look at the string and, uh, or if you can uh, uh, summarize in the question what the issue is. Uh, she got, I don't know. I, so I, I don't know, I think Marosh would be the right one to summarize it. My take is that the Kafka cluster failed because some topic suddenly didn't have the topic ID. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, uh, I mean, uh, this is something I or you have to, to dig and uh, look at it more closely. So let me just. Uh, it gets a number. So it's 10 or 54. OK. okay so I I can take a look at it. Paste into the chat. Awesome. Thanks. So maybe do you think you can have a quick look into it and we can get back to it next time? Yeah, I'll do that.
Ok. Uh, another two issues are the issues I opened uh, pretty much for tracking purposes because there's not much to do right now, but we should start preparing and collecting all the things we want to change in the V1 version of the Strimsy CRDs. And so I had these tracked on the side, but yeah, it's good to have them as an issue. So this one is that for all resources, we should mark the spec section as required. Right now, we have it in a bit mixed way. For example, the Kafka topic doesn't have it required and it has to be validated in the in the operator and so on. So I think this is a good thing to do in the V1 API or Yeah, for example, in, in the topic operator, we have a lot of complexity to handle this that we can, can get rid of in V1, so it will be good. And the next issue is actually from the from the same point. And that is, we have this issue that when we originally designed the Kafka Connect and Kafka Mirror Maker CRDs, we have a fixed static default value for the configuration of the topics for uh, for the topics used internally by Kafka Connect to store the offsets and configs and so on. And this caused a lot of issues when uh, one user deploys multiple Connect clusters and doesn't change these names, then they basically use the same topics and they kind of form a single Connect cluster. So I don't know how well that can be addressed in the CRDV one, but yeah, maybe we should try to think about it and have a look at it on whether we can somehow do this by making the options required or, or something like that. So like this one doesn't have a clear way how to do it. So maybe it should have a proposal as part of it as well, but it seemed to me like that would be a useful thing to improve, which we can't really improve any other way outside of the API version change. Yeah, it sounds like a useful thing for me because it's certainly something that people are likely to want to do, I think. And yeah, agree on the needs proposal. Okay, so needs triage, needs proposal. And the last issue for the triage is uh, about the Kafka rebalance getting stuck if the cruise control pod is restarted while this rebalance is happening. Uh, so I think Shubham is not on the call, but he was trying to reproduce it and didn't succeed it so far. But I think assuming it really happens as described in the latest version, then it is something we want to address somehow by failing the Kafka rebalance or restarting it or or whatever the right way might be, but it should not get stuck or...
Do you know if the topic operator handles this, Federico? Uh, yeah, so the topic operator is able to detect that this is happening and reset its internal state so that it can, can let me say, restart from scratch the operation that it was that remained pending. But I, I, did, I didn't look at this issue specifically, so that, that's how the topic operator handled this. I'll have a look and, uh, and leave a note on about what the topic operator is doing on this uh, issue. But I guess, assuming we can reproduce it for the Kafka rebalance resource, we want to have it somehow addressed, right? Yes. Is this something I should reproduce, try to reproduce as well? Sorry? Sorry, is it something I should try to reproduce as well during some testing or something? I guess. One is trying to reproduce it now. So I don't know if we need someone else to try it in parallel or. Okay, I will chat with Shubham in any case. Should we keep the needs triage label for next time, given the? Yeah, I think it's a good idea because we haven't been able to reproduce it yet. So Okay, so I guess that's it for the for the triage. Uh, anyone has any other issues to discuss or triage? If not, I wanted to raise the possibility to upgrade the base image from the UBI eight image to UBI nine image. Uh, the UBI nine image is using the rel nine Linux distro as the as the basis, and the images are slightly smaller. So hopefully, also with slightly less CV surface and so on. Uh, so maybe we want to move to that. Otherwise, there doesn't seem to be really that much difference. Yeah, I agree on moving to UB9. Yeah, I think we already did uh, some tests on that, right? Yeah, I did some testing, yeah. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. And that takes us to the, any other business. I see someone at its Trimzicon, which is next week on Wednesday. Does anyone has have anything more to that? I added it. It was just to remind people to come along and listen. Yeah, if you are 
listening to the recording or you like and you are not yet registered, uh, then yeah, you can register through the link. It's virtual event, so you don't need to be in any particular place and it's free. So yeah, you should definitely sign up if you are not yet. Anyone has any other business to discuss? If not, then I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining and see you in two weeks. Or actually see you next week on Stromzicon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.